wait a minute, she said she couldn't find me. <laughs> there are 105 million references to me on Google alone. <laughs> Most of them have my address and or my phone number. I'm in the phone book. I'm easily findable. Here I am. Hello, Sylvia. Where are you? Now, she talks to dead people. <laughs> and I'm not dead, as you may have noticed. <laughs> I'm available, Sylvia. Where are you? Someone who talks to dead people can't find me? Oh, I don't think so. But she's ignored it because she has to ignore it. She knows very well she cannot produce. Now, I don't say that Sylvia Brown doesn't talk to dead people. I can talk to dead people, hello. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're going to answer. That's the basic question here. Will they answer? And of course they don't. I don't say these things don't exist. Now bear that in mind. When you leave here today, I want you to remember one thing that I am pushing for you to understand. The James Randi Educational Foundation and James Randi himself does not make any claim that these wonderful powers don't exist. We simply say, you say they exist? All right, prove it and win one million dollars. That should be easy. But they're not lined up outside unless this whole crowd was lined up outside just to come in and win the million dollars. Now I'm a little afraid. <laughs> now all these religious claims are eligible for the million dollars. All of them and unreligious claims as well. All kinds of supernatural, occult, and paranormal <coughs> claims. Now one thing that makes me wonder about the United States of America, you know, you folks have got us all beat. The rest of the world has all beat on, on one particular aspect. The metric system. <laughs> in the United States of America, we don't use the metric system. We still measure temperature in Fahrenheit. Oh, that's very scientific. And we talk about uh, miles and uh, rods and various other measurements like this. We have no idea how to use the simplest system in the world, which is the metric system. And I want to tell you why. Now, I, I, I say this in the United States, and some people say, oh, come on, that can't be true. They go away, and they come back to me, and they say, damn, I looked into it. And it's true. Because there are lobbyists in Washington, D.C. These are people who are paid by certain interests out there, whether they be manufacturers or uh, different agencies of various kinds that want to pay these lobbyists to work for them to convince congressmen of certain points of view. And the religious lobbyists out there for years now have been telling the congressmen, oh, don't use the metric system. You know, that was designed by atheists <laughs> and the worst kind, French atheists. <laughs> And we wouldn't want to have that. I mean, after all, uh, that's not the devil. The, no, it's the devil's work. It's not the work of the Bible because they say that the English system of measurement is much closer to the Bible, which it is not. It's nothing like the measurement system used in the Bible. But that's a reason that our congressmen won't activate the metric system in the United States of America, which would simplify all of our lives. You know what happened with the Hubble Space Telescope. Part of it was made on the metric system and part of it was made on the English system. And when they got up in space and put the two of them together, guess what? They didn't work. <laughs> and it cost us another $20 million and the cost of sending up the shuttle with a whole repair crew to go out there with wrenches and change the mirrors and move lenses around and whatnot. And they finally got it working and it's done a wonderful job since. I'm sure you'll all agree. It's a wonderful tour de force, a great piece of technology, but we could have been spared all that trouble, and I helped them pay, it for, pay for that with my tax money. Now, back to the, for a moment, to the magician as an entertainer. I um, have often given this example. I've got pills in my mouth here somewhere. That's where I got from. Uh, imagine that you're going to see a uh, Shakespeare play named Hamlet. You're all familiar with that, of course very famous Shakespeare play. Suppose you see it advertised in the marquee of the theater, and you go into the theater, you buy your ticket first, I would hope, and then you go into the theater, you sit down, you watch the, the play, and you're very edified by it, you give a big round of applause to the cast, and they come out and take bows, and finally, the star of the show 
Hamlet himself comes walking out, or the actor who plays Hamlet, I should be more correct, and he uh, takes his bow and he holds up his hand and he says, ladies and gentlemen, he takes off the wig. He says, I want you to know something. I'm not just an actor. I actually am a prince of Denmark. <laughs> ah, you would be insulted. You've paid to go in and see this man do this wonderful play and he's a good actor and you enjoyed it and you gave him the round of applause. Then he comes out and tells you he really is Hamlet. You would be insulted, but you're not insulted when somebody who says they know all about astrology publishes an article in the paper every day or every week, all down through the years, telling you what the astrological signs for your particular sign has to do with your future and giving you advice on how to behave yourself. And you don't object when the, the media report all kinds of wonderful things, miracles that are happening left and right. But remember what I told you about the media, they are not very responsible when it comes to this sort of thing. Now, I'll give you an example of that. I have um, some place here, my, yes, I have my hotel key. No, that's not the hotel key, that's the transit key. There we are. Now, this is a magnetic hotel key. You're all familiar with this. Now we're very familiar with it, but many years ago, I um, was invited to attend a magic convention. We do hold conventions, believe it or not. A magic convention in Mexico City. So I went to, down to Mexico City and registered at the hotel and they gave me one of these magnetic keys. This is brand new. It had very seldom been heard of and very few of the hotels were using it. So I was very thrilled to be in a modern hotel that would use a key like this. Very nice, and uh, I went down to the lobby, and the media all came crowding around me and said, Oh, Mr. Reddy, we want to interview you, want to interview you. So I had a little bit of a trick. Me, a magician? Yes, I had a very good trick. And I played it on them. I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you come up to my room? Yes, I have coffee up there. Oh, very good. So we all went to the elevator, went upstairs, <laughs> got out in the elevator, and I went, and I looked around for my key, and I said, Oh, I've forgotten my key. Now they all reached for their pens right away, making notes saying, magician can't get into his own room. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they were writing down. And I said, ah, oh, but wait a minute. And I took out a deck of cards from my pocket, and I looked through the deck of cards, and I came out with the three of diamonds, put the other cards away, put the three of diamonds into the lock, and click, it opened up, and I walked in. <laughs> And the media were all astonished and said, will that work with any playing card? And I said, no, only a red three. <laughs> and they wrote it down. <laughs> and they published it in the papers that very same night. And the fellow at the cigar counter at the main floor of the hotel told me the next day, he said, I haven't got one deck of cards left. All kinds of kids were coming in here and buying decks of cards. <laughs> And I'm sure they were looking for the Three of Diamonds and trying it in the, in the doors and it wasn't working. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> but the media is so naive. And there's a reason for it, ladies and gentlemen. The media are largely educated in the humanities, not in science. So you can't really blame them. But there are some things, like using a playing card to open a magnetic lock, that they should be smart enough to know won't work. But that's an example of how naive these people are. Other examples. Oh, I will demonstrate this for you. As a matter of fact, I can do that because I have, where is my, well, oh, here it is. I have a wallet embedded in my chest right here. These glasses are no use whatsoever. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a little test here for you. This is a little device that's known as the, uh, the counterfeit dual test detector. It has in it, look at this, a little ultraviolet light that you can use to look at your bills. You see your, your bills to make sure they're not counterfeit, of course. Well, it will tell you something about the bills. There are secret markings on the bills, but the better part is the other end of it here. I'm gonna do a demonstration for you. Uh, in my wallet, where did I put the wallet? There it is. I'm sure I have a bill here. Ah, here we are. This is, oh, a $20 bill. Well, it's not a $100 bill, but you know, this is a cheap lecture, so what can I do? <laughs> I'm going to step down into the audience for a moment here. I'm going to ask, uh, um, I, I don't want to choose a skeptic, you see, and these, these people look like skeptics, so I'm going to choose someone who's relatively innocent.